Hi, my name is Kelly Hood. I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Optic Cyber Solutions. And today we're going to be talking about the NIST cybersecurity framework. So uh, today in the presentation, what we're going to do is walk through really just the key components of the framework to give you a quick understanding of what it is and, and the key values that it includes. So in this, uh, through these next few slides, we're going to be walking through the framework core, the implementation tiers, the profile, and then talk about those key values being uh, really the, the risk-based approach that it allows people to take to um, look at their cybersecurity program, how it can help establish a common language within organizations as well as external partners for facilitating a conversation about cybersecurity, and also the many references it has to other standards through the online informative references um, that are now on a NIST website, as well as in the current version of the document. So to start off, um, the framework does have three core components, being the, the core, the profiles, and the tiers. Um, this is similar to some of their other frameworks, um, like the privacy framework that was released earlier this year. Um, so when, whenever the NIST was developing that, they did make sure that, uh, that those documents would work hand in hand together and could be used in parallel very easily. So you'll see that is familiar. Um, as we get into look a little bit more specifically at the core, really it, it's a common set of cybersecurity activities um, kind of defining, you know, that question of what is cybersecurity, what is inside of that scope and, and where, where do you draw the line? And it's broken down across the five functions that you can see in, in the picture on the left here with the identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. Um, and really, as it was developed, it was built in a way that could be used across industries of all sizes and sectors um, to be able to be that, that mechanism to, um, to communicate back and forth using that common set of, of activities. So by doing this and looking at it in this kind of life cycle approach, it helps to take a strategic, a high level view of security um, and make sure that you've got all of your bases covered. Um, here we can see a little bit more information on the core where we've got those five functions that I mentioned on the left um, and then broken down there. The next level is the category where there's 23 categories uh, and then subcategories is the lowest level here with 108 subcategories currently and we can see those IDs um, listed out. Uh, well, actually just the subcategory IDs listed out here. Uh, but there is another level down that each of those categories is further broken down into subcategories. Um, but each of these are, are outcome based. So they're not going to tell you how you need to implement the, the categories or the subcategories, but they're going to tell you what you need to do. So what is that end state, whether it's protecting data at rest to having um, you know, cybersecurity training in place, you know, how you're going to have to do that is going to be different for every organization. Um, but the what the, what needs to be done will will need to be the same. So next we have the tiers um, that really define um, kind of the level of implementation. So how robust does that need to be? How um, and and how and how well enforced? So we can see at the at the lower end here we have our tier one, um, which is partial, um, meaning that an organization may have those categories and subcategories implemented. Um, partially or in an ad hoc manner. You're not going to find a lot of consistency, but there are going to be things that, that are being done. Um, risk informed, a tier two is where we start to see a little bit more consistency. Um, people are going to be doing things in a way that makes sense for their organization, where at a level one, people may just uh, are be implementing those, those subcategories based on you know gut feeling and what, what they think is the right thing to do. At the tier two, we'll start seeing people implementing uh, implementing them in a way that really uh, makes sense for their organization where they've considered the risk that they have and, and those critical assets and, and they've taken that into consideration. At a tier three is where we start seeing some more um, repeatable processes. That's where things get more consistent, more formalized. We're not only making sure that we're doing things at the appropriate level, but we're documenting that and communicating that so that everybody knows what their expectations are. And then at a level four um, is adaptive. So there we're, we've got our, our house in order, we're documenting things, we've got consistency, um, but now we're also looking towards the future to understand what may be coming, how do we need to prepare, and then also communicating with other organizations. So if we're seeing things in industry that's a problem, we're gonna be looking to work with others in our community to let them know, hey, we saw this, we saw this vulnerability um, exploited or we, we are seeing something new that we need to be aware of and start putting um, 
uh, uh, more uh, robust controls in place to prevent those. And then across um, the middle here, you can also see um, each of these tiers is uh, has a formal definition in the cybersecurity framework document and with more definition broken down uh, for the risk management process, how that risk management has been being integrated across the organization and that external participation that we were mentioning um, about how you're working with your community. Um, so third, we have the profiles, and this is where really everything gets documented. So a profile can take a lot of different forms. I mean, I've seen it as a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet. There are lots of tools that will help you do that. But, but essentially, a profile is just a way that you can, you can record what you're doing um, to meet the, the, the core, the, um, the, the categories and the subcategories. And really, it provides that way to look at um, looking at your business objectives, you know, the threat environment, any requirements or other controls you may have if you've got um, compliance uh, constraints or regulatory requirements, and being able to bring that all into one place and document that centrally. Um, and the profile, really, there are two versions of a profile that um, that are recommended, and that's your current state and your target state. So the, the current state is obviously what, what you're doing today, um, whether right or wrong. It's just a place to understand, you know, what, what are we doing? Do we have an asset management program? Is it written down on a sticky note? Or do we have a, da a database that's documenting all of that? Um, the current state is, is just to, to get an understanding of what, what you're doing today. Um, but that target state is where you can also look towards the future and say, Maybe, maybe that sticky note isn't appropriate. Maybe I need to do something more. Um, what should that be? And by documenting that in the target state, you can then take a step back and prioritize and look at how you're doing with your current against your target and get that understanding of where your priorities should be and where those highest risk areas are. Um, so it provides a really great mechanism to have those conversations um, about all of those categories and subcategories in the core, having the conversation about the tier to say how, how robust do we need to be um, and through, through this program and then being able to document that in the profiles. So that's a really quick overview of those three core components of the, of the cybersecurity framework. Um, it provides a really great way to, to facilitate that communication and really drive consistency across organizations. One of the key values I did want to point out was that common language of the framework, that it was written at a level that people within an organization, from the implementers to the business level, to the executive level on the board can have it can use the, the language of the framework to have a conversation about cybersecurity and what's being done in their organization. Additionally, we talked a little bit about the current and target state profiles. By doing that, it really helps to get that understanding of where we are today and where we need to be, which allows that, that identification of gaps, um, prioritization, and, and budgeting even to look at, you know, what do we need to what do we need to have to get there? and to help prioritize those activities across you know, days, months, or even years. And then finally, one of the last uh, key values we wanted to highlight was the informative references. So there's a lot of resources out there for the cybersecurity framework these days, which is just wonderful. And on NIST website, they have a list of um, informative references uh, specifically mapped back to the framework. Um, you can see everything from the CIS controls to COBIT to FAIR and so on. So there's a lot of really great resources there. If there's other standards and frameworks you're familiar with um, that, that you want to see that mapping to or that alignment to to understand the relationship, you can find that all on NIST's website. So this was just a really quick overview of what the framework is with its three core components, the, the core, the profiles, and the tiers. And, and a few key values and reasons that people have, have seen a lot of uh, help in their organization through implementing it. Um, finally, here, uh, we want to provide a few resources, a few links to the resources, a few on our OPTIC website, as well as several links to the NIST website with those online informative references and some use cases, and even a privacy framework crosswalk that I mentioned early on. Thank you for watching this webinar. I hope it was helpful. My name is Kelly Hood, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.